Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday here at Bible Tract Echoes. Those words, Tract and Truth, are the title we give to every one of our Tuesday broadcast. On our Tuesday broadcast here at Bible Tract Echoes, we set aside our Bible study time, and recently we've been studying through the book of Ruth, but we set aside our Bible study wherever we are walking through the Word of God. We set it aside so that we can nudge each other to be more effective in telling the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to people who do not know Christ as Savior. There are actually people in every country, actually people living in your local area who've never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I found that to be true back in the 1970s and 80s, and it's still true today. In the country that I live in, the United States of America, there are just tons of people who have never heard the gospel. And I'm a believer, and God's called me to share the gospel. I've got four particular verses of scripture here in front of me. I'm not gonna ask you to turn in your Bible today, but you may want to get a piece of paper and pencil ready to jot down four facts I want to share. I've got a short part of an email I wanna be sharing with you today as well. But let me lead into our Tract and Truth Day this way. Today's going to be a little bit different here at Tract and Truth. I may make some of you very uncomfortable. I may step on your toes, but hopefully what I share today can be a helpful motivator to you and to your local church. If you're a pastor and you're listening today, I'm really glad. If you're a lay person here, a lay follower of Christ who desires to see the gospel become more readily used by all people who know Christ, that I'm really Really glad you're listening. I want to share what one pastor is doing to strengthen the practice of telling the gospel at his local church among the lives of his people. But first of all, though, I want to pass along a note I got from a pastor friend, a Bible college leader in the country of Nigeria in Africa. If I have ever spoken at your church and presented the ministry of Bible tracts and preached the gospel there, then probably I have shown you a picture of this man. His name is God's Time. That's his first name. It's all one word, no apostrophe, God's Time, G-O-D-S-T-I-M-E, God's Time. Now, in an email, I asked him if that was his actual first name, and here is what he wrote back, and I'm reading now. Yes, God's Time is my real name. My mother gave birth to seven children before me, but they all died one by one. When she was pregnant with me, my parents named me God's time when I was still in the womb. It means God is best. My parents were so happy that I lived, and I did not die like the first seven children in the previous 12 years, end quote. Wow. Please pray for Pastor God's time. He's doing a phenomenal work. There's a lot of Muslims in his area. He started over 50 churches. That is he and those that are working with him, over 50 local churches. He started a Bible college, and we could learn a lot, not only from him, but a lot from his godly parents and their attitude amidst personal pain and loss. They still trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Before I give some four facts here, I want to urge you to get some gospel tracts from us. Now, a gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. One of the gospel tracts I want to put into your hand is this one entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. It is the personal life testimony of a young man named James Dunkley, who gave his life in combat for our country on a second 
tour of duty in the Middle East, but God was using this young man to really impact not only people for the gospel, but impact believers in telling the gospel. The track title, Ready to Die, was a motto that this man took for himself when he was 14 years old. He even made his own logo, and you'll find that logo in this gospel track. As you read this track, you're going to hear how people's lives were impacted by a guy who took seriously the fact that he was a follower of Christ and wanted to tell others about Christ and urge others to be gospel tellers. If you are a young person, if you have friends in military, here's a great tool to give to them, Ready to Die. It's just one of the tracks in a sample packet that I want to give to you. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, this free sample packet, uh, there's 40 tracks in it, all different. The free sample packet will be sent to you as quickly as we can get it there. If you can't wait to the end of our broadcast, you can go to our website and order the sample packet there. The web address is bibletracksinc.org. Let me begin with four facts about the gospel message. Fact number one is this. The gospel is for all people. Remember the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, verse 10? The angel said, Behold, I bring you good tidings, great joy, which shall be to what? All people. That's fact number one. Fact number two, the gospel is the power to see people saved. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Fact number three, the gospel is to be presented to all people. In the Gospel of Mark, the last chapter, chapter 16, verse 15, we're told to preach the gospel to every creature, every person. And then fact number four is this. The gospel is to be told by every believer. Sometime you need to look up Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and 4. Due to the persecution, verse 1 says, they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostle, except the professional Christians. But then verse 4 of Acts 8 says, they that were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. The word preaching there does not mean preaching from a pulpit. They were just telling the gospel. They were lay people doing this. Well, let me tell you about this one pastor. A pastor in a church has been doing a wonderful job, but a bold thing. He was so concerned that his people did not know how to tell the gospel and that they were not even trying to tell the gospel. It bothered him. So one Sunday evening during the church's Sunday night service, the pastor asked his people to think of the hardest kind of person they could think of who would hate the gospel and be hard to tell the gospel to. Well, they decided on what that person was and who they were, and somebody then pretended to be that person, and the pastor played the role of the gospel teller trying to give them the gospel, and the person made it hard. Well, over the next weeks, every Sunday night, for about 20 minutes, someone in the church pretended to be a lost person, and the pastor tried to share with them the gospel. Some of his church folk made it easy. Some of them made it really hard. Some even stumped the pastor with some questions they asked. Well, when that happened, the pastor would return the next Sunday night with the answer. The people through all this were learning by watching how to tell the gospel. Next, the pastor began to handpick certain people in the church. He began with some of the key church men, and it would become their turn to be the gospel teller. Now, when he did this, the pastor played the role of the lost person so as not to make it too difficult and too embarrassing if the person happened to stumble. Now, through all this time, the pastor was also having the church folk memorize some of the key Bible verses that you use when you witness to give out the gospel. He gave the Romans road. He gave out a couple of verses out of Isaiah 53 and other places as well. Over the weeks, more and more people became their turn to be the gospel teller. 
And because they had both watched the gospel being told by the pastor and others, and because they had were put on the spot to tell the gospel, the church folk outside of church services began telling the gospel to the people they knew. Their confidence grew because they had watched every Sunday night and through those services, they had seen people stumble and kind of regather themselves and they found out it's okay when you're telling the gospel. If you stumble and don't get everything right, it's okay. God's going to honor your work. But they began to tell the gospel in their personal lives outside of the services. Now, I tell you all this and right about now, some of you might be saying something like this. You'd say, Pastor Mark, I would never attend a church that put people on the spot like that. And to that, I would say to you, you're right. You probably wouldn't attend that kind of church. But then I take you aside, put my arm around your shoulder, and I would ask you these questions privately. Question number one is this. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your personal practice in the area of witnessing? How would you rate yourself? On a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is poor, 10 is great. My second question would be this. Do you believe Jesus desires for you to be a gospel teller? Do you think God, that's his heartbeat for you, for every believer, including you, to be a gospel teller? Question number three is this. Why are you fighting God in seeing his desire, his passion for you to come to pass? If God wants every believer to be a gospel teller, and he does, and you are saying, no, you don't want to be part of a church that urges that and kind of, well, puts you on the spot to become that, why are you fighting God in seeing God's desire for your life to come to pass? And question number four is this. If you don't want to obey God in the area of witnessing, what other areas in your life are you being disobedient? Now, before coming to be the leader here at Bible Tracks, I pastored 30 years, and I learned this lesson. Sins are usually not singular. They kind of become group things. One sin, and when allowed to be in our life, becomes attached to another sin, and there's a second and a third and a fourth area in which we're willing to let our Christian life slide and be less than faithful to God. You may be wondering if I'd really ever take somebody aside and ask those kinds of questions. My answer is, yes, I would. You know why? I've done it. You see, loving pastors, loving spiritual leaders really do these kinds of things. We want our people to be growing in their walk with God. Growing believers are gospel-telling believers. Non-gospel-telling people are not growing people. Now, I'm going to say that again. Growing believers are gospel-telling people. Now, you may not have not been shown how to tell the gospel, but start because non-gospel tellers are not growing in their walk with the Lord. Now, I told you I might be stepping on some toes today. If I stepped on yours, well, then maybe you ought to go to your pastor and say, Pastor, can we have a church that motivates us to tell the gospel, even putting us on the spot? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.